Hello, everybody. This is Carol speaking. Welcome to our last PolyWorks webinar of this series. Today, we are talking about how to simplify adding 3D inspection results to corporate Excel reports. Let's welcome Roberto Barreto as he is our presenter today. Roberto is a member of the technical support group and he is our webinar coordinator. Let me remind you that if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the questions panel. I will be monitoring the questions throughout the webinar. We will have a short Q&A session at the end. If we don't have time to answer all of the questions, we will get back to you by email. And yes, this webinar is being recorded, so it will be available for later viewing. Roberto, it's all yours. Thank you, Carol. Quality departments frequently rely on Microsoft Excel to further analyze their inspection results using spreadsheets that include formulas, graphs, special formatting, and in some cases, even custom macros. This webinar will present how to use PolyWorks Report Loop to insert your 3D inspection results into your corporate Excel spreadsheets. PolyWorks Report Loop is a free Excel add-in that you can download directly from InnoMetrics Technical Support Zone or from the new releases email that is sent out every month. You can use it to connect your existing Excel spreadsheets to your inspection projects that are opening either PolyWorks Inspector or PolyWorks Reviewer. To see this in action, we will use three different custom built Excel spreadsheets. The first one displays measurement results in a way that is simple and easy to understand. The second one is a more classic multi piece inspection report template. And the third one uses a graph to plot the XY location of holes from multiple pieces for analysis. In our first example, we need to insert the results of this probing inspection project currently open in PolyWorks Inspector into our first custom spreadsheet. The project contains the key dimensions of a custom built bicycle frame that need to be communicated to the final customer. To do this, we will use this custom built Excel spreadsheet that visually displays these dimensions and makes it easy to understand regardless of the end customer. To begin populating the report, I will show the report tools from the PolyWorks report loop uh, ribbon that it's adding during the installation of the add-in and connect to the corresponding PolyWorks project. I can then use the tree view that is displayed on the left and which provides access to control views, measurement objects, and report items if they exist. And to display the information that can be added to a spreadsheet, we just need to select the appropriate node from the tree view. For example, the piece level node gives us access to all of the piece properties. And that information that can be added is shown in the preview pane at the bottom. To insert the desired information, all we need to do is select the destination cell, select the content that we want to add, and click on Insert. I repeat the process for the customer name, which in this case is a custom property on my project. And I'll do the same thing for the total before tax. And note that a simple double click will also do the trick and insert the value into the destination cell. The next two cells calculate using Excel formulas, the sales tax, and the total due for this particular custom bicycle frame. To insert the dimensions, I will use the report table that was created to that end in the project and start inserting the values. Like the in this case, I'll start with the, uh, the BB drop, which is this one right here. Then I'll continue to the wheel base, sorry about that, uh, which is this one right here. Then I'll continue with the C tube angle, the top tube, the units, which are also part of my report, then the down tube length and the head tube angle. With those values now all inserted, one very important thing to note is that we're not just simply pasting the values into the cells. We're actually creating a formula that points the cell to the right PolyWorks workspace and the right project meaning that any changes will be reflected here if we go and change our inspection project. So for example, I can go back and decide to change the units of my report 
to inches, for example, or my project to inches reflecting a customer request. And by saving those changes, you'll know that the full Excel sheet will be updated with the new values, including the units at the bottom. And, then I'll, and now I have a full report ready to go without needing to use macros or Vivid scripts. All updates, all its length. All of these tools we just saw can also be very useful in a more classic reporting scenario where we need to insert all of our inspection results into a table that is created in an Excel sheet. In this case, my Excel sheet also has formulas, a very simple one that uses tolerance, deviation, and pass status to determine if uh, a rework is done. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, a large tolerance requires a scrap of the part because it's too deviated, but something that's very close to the tolerance will suggest a rework in that particular case. Now, the values that we will report using this Excel uh, spreadsheet come from this particular project right here, which is a multi-piece inspection project that contains different types of measurement objects like features, comparison points, gauges, and so on. And it also uses control views to easily review the results after the inspection is done. As before, by connecting the Excel spreadsheet to the appropriate project, we get access to the different nodes that contain all the information. Now, we have access to each one of the control views that were created to review the results, which are small subsets of controls. But we also have access to the all controls list which shows everything that was measured and controlled in this particular project. And this can be very useful for smaller projects with only a few controls that all need to be put into the same Excel sheet, which is the case here. From here, we can select a full column and insert it directly into the spreadsheet. And even better, we can even select full ranges of cells and insert them in. But to efficiently do this, we need to make sure that the order of the columns matches what we have in our Excel spreadsheet. So let me resize this so we can see this a little bit better. For this, Polyworks Report Loop actually allows me to remove the columns that don't exist in my Excel spreadsheet. And it also allows me to reorder them so that the order of them matches what we have here. You see nominal and tolerance. So I need to be able to drag that tolerance column right next to the nominal. And once that is done, everything's matching what I have. I can go and select my range. and insert the results into my Excel spreadsheet. Everything's calculated. We have a simple rework here on circle five, and I'm gonna add a piece property, which is the piece name, into that as well. So we can identify easily which, uh, which piece we're reviewing at any particular moment. Now, I have a complete report now for piece one, but as I mentioned earlier, we have four other pieces in my project that I need to inspect. So I want to inspect and use in the same template. So to do this, Polyworks Report Loops follows the same principle of Polyworks Inspector for multi-piece inspection. There is no need to manually reprogram subsequent pieces. If I want a report that looks like this for all of the other pieces, I can simply create one sheet for every single piece that we have. From here, we can decide which pieces we want to report. For example, I can leave out the last one if, for example, I haven't finished the measurement yet, and launch the creation of the sheets. Polyworks would then go and add a sheet for every one of the inspections that's being done and update the values by mapping them to the right piece in Inspector. There we go. Once the job is complete and we can track the progress here, we can see that in the last piece, which is piece B4, we have two features that are failing but that can be reworked to put them into tolerance and to approve this particular piece. So in a couple minutes, we've not only created four uh, reports for this particular project, but we also have a template that's ready to go whenever a new piece is measured for this particular project. Now, in addition to being able to fill out Excel reports like this, Polyworks Report Loop also allows you to use the power of Excel to perform supplemental dimensional and manufacturing analysis. In this project that I'm currently reviewing in Polyworks Reviewer, we can see that the whole number eight is the only feature that is failing the tolerance. 
Now, if we select it and look at its SPC chart, we're going to see that uh, it suddenly started failing a few inspections ago. So I would like to investigate this further. And what I will do to do this is I would like to plot the X and Y coordinates of the center of the hole in a chart for all of the pieces. And to do so, I will use this generic uh, Excel spreadsheet that can be used for any hole in any piece in any project at any time. To fill it out, I can just connect to the corresponding project, in this case, third project. And we're going to insert four simple uh, pieces of information. I'm going to begin with the piece name, so we can identify it, the measurement date and time, which I'm going to insert there. And then we need the X and Y deviation for hole 8. Now, I could just look for hole 8 in the list of features here. And this is a small project, so it wouldn't be difficult to find it. But what's even better is that I can go into the all controls list. And if you have like hundreds of features, you could just use the search tool that's provided to narrow down your results to what you need. In this case, I need right hole number eight, and I have it right there. And I have the X deviation and the Y deviation. And as soon as I put them both in, I get the X, Y center plot directly into my chart. So as before, I want to do this for all of my pieces. So I'll select that range and copy those specific cells for each one of the pieces. Here I'll go with all of them because I do want to see all of them like we saw in the trend chart. And again, this little window allows us to track the progress of this multi-piece inspection uh, fetching of results. And uh, what's even better is that you'll see the values showing up at the bottom. And because those cells are linked to the Excel chart, You'll see the points show up on the list one by one as we may, as we load the values from the different pieces. Now, remember the chart was showing that we were constantly passing the tolerance and then we eventually started failing? That's what we're seeing there. We're seeing all the values being plotted pretty close to each other and inside our tolerance zone. And eventually we start seeing some failing points. Now, we see one there and another one there. And what we want to see is, are they just randomly failing all around? Do I have control over my process or not? And here we can see that they're all failing, but they're all skewed to the same location. So what that means is I still have a pre-repeatable process. I just need to adjust it so that they're now, again, in tolerance. Once this is all done, we can continue to use Excel to drill down into the data a little bit more. For example, we could go see what was happening in a specific month, like the month of, of October, or maybe the month of October and November. We could zoom into the chart, which is just something that's embedded into that particular chart. Or we can zoom out and analyze that last problematic month. And we can see when the problem exactly started. And it's in December. And we we'll see by how much we need to correct it. All of this, combined with what we saw in the previous two scenarios, demonstrates how you can use PolyWorks Report Loop to combine the power of Inspector and Excel, both for reporting results performing manufacturing analysis, and much more. Thank you, Roberto. And we do have a few questions that are coming in, so let's go with the first one. Uh, so in Inspector, what about my snapshots of color maps? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, I don't have a snapshot, but let me create one very quickly here. Let me just skip my scan and create a quick color map here. All right, so I have a color map there, and you're talking about a snapshot. So I'll just go ahead and capture that. And uh, if I go back to the Excel uh, report that was connected with that, I can find my snapshot in the report items, and you can insert it. So it's also supported. And one very nice thing about this is that, let me resize it. So we, let's say we want to put it like right there on the top corner to complement our results. Uh, what's nice about this is that, as with everything else, if I make a change here, like for example, if I change my alignment, which changes my color map, and I hit save, my snapshot will also update there. So it's a link to the project. It's not just a dumb picture that we're adding there. OK, so one more question. Um, in Inspector, so how do you get your tables to be in the tree view instead of the formatted report? Uh, that's a very good question that I'm guessing a lot of people have, because during basic training, when you create tables, snapshots, or control views, everything normally goes to your formatted report. Uh, that's an option. And if you're going for a formal report, that's what you want to do. But if you know you're going to go out to Excel at some point or that's the only thing you're going to do, uh, there is a setting in the options under the objects. 
report section that allows you to decide what to do every time you create a snapshot, control view, or table. And by default, you're going to the active format of report, but in our case, I'm setting it up so it goes to the tree view so that I can easily pull it into report uh, loop later on if that's my end goal. Thank you. And this is all the time that we have for the questions. So this webinar has been recorded. It will be available on the InnovMetric software website. Navigate to the About Us section. It will also be available on the InnovMetric software channel on YouTube. So our next webinar, actually, we'll only be returning in February 2020, so February 13th to be exact. As for the topics, well, you have to stay tuned. It will be announced at a later date. So thank you for joining us this morning. And on behalf of the InnovMetric software team, we wish you happy holidays. Please be safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.